The pose, I rose, blooming into a higher state of being. The ancient gods recognized me as one of them. So before me, they opened up multi-dimensional gateways. A brain operating at 10% of its capacity cannot get to grips with concepts beyond this physical paradigm. How I appear in more than one place at the same time. My mind began to expand as the unknown strands of my DNA unraveled mysteries from my ancestry. Rooting throughout history to the first divine beings that walked this planet. I can now fathom the power I feel every time I write. A solar ball of flames rotates in my palms. Now I'm able to create. Listen, we're too great to self deprecate. What fear is there when you see yourself macro sized in the skies? We are stars on earth in human form. And my poetry is a mirror to show you just how much we all want shine. And remember, you are entitled to be treated with courtesy. The police must tell you the grounds for the search. Say what they are looking for. Identify themselves. Show you their warrant if they are in plain clothes. Tell you what station they are from. Offer you a slip, a record of the search. If they don't do these things, the search is unlawful. It's a good idea to get a slip and you'll need it if you would like to make a complaint at all. Have a record of how many times you've been stopped or hold the police accountable for their actions. The police may give you the slip there and then after the search. Or ask you to collect it later at the station. You may feel embarrassed and not want to wait for your slip. But it's worth getting a record. In a nutshell, the police can stop you. It helps to cooperate. Stay calm, be polite, know your rights and do get a record. Huh. Spread the thoughts long, yeah we walk strong Awesome, eating beats till they're all gone I won't be anchored, flows be transferred No the standard, erase phony gangsters Actors and actresses and activists Of accurate practices, get back to biz I'm higher than the robin, I'll be tired of the shot And I'm residing with the rotten Where the tides are picking cotton, I've forgotten But I'm stopping till the sky I will be dropping I'll be topping, but it's dropping to a button I'm in Notting Hill, stop and chill Keep going, I'll be keep bobbing See sewing while free flowing Keep throwing each poem while beats blowing Lights be blowing, every side streets knowing Got my psyche grown, keep the tight cheek towing Every rhyme steam rolling, yeah, 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 I know, I know hey, Do the damn thing, do the damn thing do the damn thing, 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 do the damn thing
go to your head full. I know I know. Hey, do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Why not? Do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Do the damn thing, do the do the damn thing. Do the do the do the do the Do the damn thing. Do the damn thing. Watusi 87. 87. Apologies for the feedback that you heard a moment ago. Yeah, it was, it's the power in the room. Yes, there's That's too much it the energy power in the coming room. through. This is serious energy. But yeah, the first track was by... Nat Nye, and the one and only. Yeah, and it's called Poetic Temple. Those of you that listen to our show regularly, you recognise that track. It's from the EP Poetic Temple. You can get it on natnai.com. And you are now listening. We've taken a baton from over from Empress Kango. The talented, multi-talented Sistran. Warrior. From Woman in Revolution. Shout out to Sister I, Trisha and Sister Liz. Yes, Sister Liz, who is a woman in waiting, we're still waiting for the little one to arrive. The star from the skies to emerge from her heavenly body. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Give Thanks for a wonderful, wonderful show. Some helpful tips in terms of homeschooling. Very important information. That Very important. Being, um, bestowed. And um, we are here. I am Stella B. And this I'm is Nat Nye. And we've got some fantastic guests in the studio got today. Some legendary guests. Yes, amazing, amazing. This is like a day that, you know, is heaven sent for us. We give thanks to our ancestors. Um, Every for, single time we wake up and give breath. Yes, for blessing us with life and sunshine. Looking out the window in this October day mm. is looking so blissful. And we know, I've got a feeling it's going to be a great show today. It always <laughs> is. And your feeling is confirmed. <laughs> yes. So um, let's welcome to the studio the wonderful, wonderful... Now, who do we start with? Yeah, well, actually, so basically, there's a there's an exhibition going on <laughs> right now in Peckham. So all those who are in the Peckham area... We had, a, we had a, uh, someone that phoned in, actually, last week and, and was talking about this exhibition in particular. And they were like, they, they just walked past it. And he went in and out and he said photography is not really his thing or whatnot, but he was blown away. So he, re he gave it a five star and he recommended that people must go to this exhibition. And we just been as well. Yes, we just had a, a quick introduction, but we're definitely going to be going heading back there. Yeah, um, we, can, because, we can confirm. Yeah, because you need time. You need time to walk around in the space and really, you know, let your eyes drink in the emotion and, and, and yeah. soak all it in the different feelings that you can get from from the visuals the visuals of history yes, exactly history and it's a collection of you know african people and african people basically demonstrating their power against the power of that be mm -hmm. so wh who has done this wonderful amazing a man who's traveled internationally a man who has been doing this for many many years many, many years. years we're going way back into the early 90s yeah early 90s maybe prior to that <laughs> taking <laughs> yeah. shots of the most iconic events such as the million man march the, the first the one first one yeah the million man march the, the second, second one, one part two <laughs> yeah. events all across from stephen lawrence yeah very very poignant to and significant things that's well. happening on the continent itself yes, yep yep I don't know. He, he can tell us where he hasn't been, to be honest. Exactly. But we have the very esteemed legendary photographer by the name of Tabo. Tabo, welcome to the studio. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. And in fact, we want to give your full name, actually, but I don't want to say it wrong. That's why I didn't want to attempt. Okay, my name's um, Tabo Jayasimi. Jayasimi. Yes, Jayasimi. Jayasimi. Mm. Yes. Uh, that is from 
It's uh, my first name, Tabo, is South African. Mm-hmm. means happiness. Oh, wow. And, um, <laughs> my surname, Jai Simi, is um, Nigerian. My father is Nigerian. Mm-hmm. And they met here in England in the 60s. Okay. Oh, oh beautiful. Seed. Beautiful. Okay, Jai Simi. So now I know how to say Tabo Jai Simi. I won't forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to his right. To his right, we have a wonderful guest in the studio as well. An entrepreneur who also runs a lot of events up in um, Peckham. And Lambeth. And Lambeth. And anywhere else that would take me. <laughs> 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 and currently, the, the, the place is called Pen People. Yeah. Previously, I knew it as Pen Pansy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the update on the name. Yeah. But it's a wonderful space and it's, it's a great place where like art can be in its various forms can be um, showcased as a platform. And there's big things in the horizon that our esteemed guest is bringing forth in the future. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah, we need to hear more about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then also the history as well, because, yeah, there's certain tips that can be there's some wisdom that can be bestowed upon ones that want to do certain things in terms of liberating ourselves in a certain level but yeah big up nicholas in the building (laughs) welcome to the studio welcome to galaxy radio galaxy good to have you here glad to be here yes yes Mm -hmm. enjoying the the in the company of such wonderful presenters oh good (laughs) thanks in this i'll call this state of the art compared to when i used to be on the radio as i said earlier (laughs) (laughs) i remember when we still had the biros and we were still turning around the cassettes to play the adverts what (laughs) 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 that is funny i do i still remember the biros and and the um the cassette. cassettes, yeah, yeah, to get it all I back mean, my into da- my the thing. My daughter's twenty three, and she calls it a finger me jig, you know. <laughs> yeah. So long ago, exactly. Oh, it's a time when, wasn't it, when you used to press record to get yep. all the music off the radio, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yep. used to rewind, yeah, yep, <laughs> no fast forward, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Take the tape out and put it back in, yep. <laughs> yeah, put it back in, turn it round, and you know exactly where to <laughs> yeah. press. Yeah. yeah, you know you had to have those skills. So, yeah, okay, well, that was a time once when mm. it's good to have you in the studio. Yeah, thank you very much. Definitely going to give you a chance to talk about this future that, you know, you was mentioning about mm. what's in the pipeline. Past, present and future. Oh, thank you. So, um, we've got uh, also another special guest coming in. Yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got a packed out today, you know, we've got a packed studio of, of I need to change my bike like, so masters I'm around right. here. Like, we've got Kunga Dread at the door. About to make entry. He's got big events coming up. He's had big events um, recently. The the last major event was an, the annual event called the African Film Festival at the Bussy Buildings. A Dinkra Collective is the name of his collective that runs these events. And it's got a major event tonight. We was uh, um, promoting it on Saturday. And it's a, a documentary filming concerning the Black Panthers. So... That's also in Peckham at the Peckham Cinema, and it's only four pound ninety nine. Can't get tickets like that anymore. Can't get tickets like that anymore at the cinema. So that's a must, must go to. And yeah, just making it an entry into the building. Blessings, Kunga. Black fist, black fist, <laughs> black, fist, black power. So yeah, got a lot to talk about, really and truly. But first, one um, we've got a friend a poet called Sienna Bangura and she's a, 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 a very confident live wire type of performer and she went through an experience um, the other day she was on, on the train from oh, I don't even know where from Birmingham to Liverpool I believe it was and she suffered a racist attack from a drunk white man and he basically uh, used racial slurs against her. Used the N-word. Right. Amongst other things. Amongst other things. And basically this resulted in her, like she's she's a very strong personality, so she's going to defend herself. She well, he physically attacked her. Resulted in, her, well. in him physically attacking her. And she defended herself. She hit him back or whatnot. But the point is, she said the, the, film, uh, um, the train was packed. And no one did anything. They stood there and just witnessed. 
and in fact at a point when she was uh out of sheer um anger but for the whole situation that occurred he came and sat himself next to her and the whole incident occurred after he did that come into her space uh, there were people uh, actually telling her to calm down and leave the situation alone, the the, the typical thing. And um, it wasn't until an Asian man actually intervened that the situation, she actually felt began to feel protected. Mm. She was, it was all her defending herself against not just the gentleman, I'm calling him a gentleman, the guy who was being racist to her, but she was also defending herself against other people on the train who were now telling her to calm down right. in the situation yeah. until he ended up hitting her. So this is these racist attacks are not... I mean, it feels like they are on the increase of anything yeah. in 2015. Yeah. Look, What's happening? Well, first of all, big up to Sienna because she's such a strong person and she like she's not one to keep these things in or keep it silent. So she's gone everywhere. So it's gone kind of... It's viral, like the... So even certain um, blogs from America have picked it up and put it out there. Yeah, there's so. something called tweet, Twitter Story. Have you heard of this thing? Where you can actually put in a, a, a full-length story in the Twitter format mm. and it gets sent everywhere. So that's where her um, case has been put on the social media. I mean, social media is a very powerful tool for it's us very in these powerful instances. Tool. And she's got a loud mouth on, on, on the social media. It's like, so she's she's utilizing that platform as well and like she's got it the word out and it's to challenge that racism but it's not just to challenge that i'm glad you asked the question stella great question mm. like where does it come from because we can to get we can get caught up too much on the visceral sort of uh the basic type of racism that is in your face drunk white man like basically saying the saying it, saying racial slurs and or being the absolute imbecile but what has created that individual that needs to be analysed? So you, we're, we're seeing more and more certain propaganda being put out from newspapers that is anti-Africans. African. Yeah. And so, for example, let's give examples. Like the uh, there was one in the Evening Standard, I think it was, and they were uh, just the, the headline was African uh, migrant uh, uses the NHS. Costs the NHS 145000 by having uh, quintuplets or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there was that one. By by having quins or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Quintuplets, yeah. Yeah, yeah quintuplets, yeah. And then there was the other one, which was um, the sec uh, f foreign secretary. The foreign secretary. No, was it the home secretary? Uh, one of them who actually said... That migrants, uh, African, African, African migrants. migrants specifically specified, not just migrants, he said African migrants are a threat to UK society. Yeah, that was all over the news. newspapers in one, one <laughs> Monday morning. <laughs> You're just waking up out of your slumber. You've had a, your, your, your Sunday and it's time for work. And that's the first thing you see in Sipping the Sipping your lemon and ginger exactly. and you're having to spit it out because you're seeing that. And then... Um, the Katie Hopkins. Classic Katie Hopkins with her vile, ma vile mouth. Always coming up with something. Yeah, what racist. did she say again? She, she's Cockroaches. Cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the bodies. I still don't care. Yeah, that was everywhere. So these things have been coming out over the... And David Cameron himself, of months. course. Yeah, with the swarms. The, the, the language <clears throat> is there. But then it's these people, such as this gen this this gentleman, they exist anyway. But it's in, in a certain environment they can be more free to speak more or attack more. Let's say it's not just speaking because he was this was an attack, an attack. Yeah. In a certain environment that's created, they feel more free to express that side of themselves. What is going on? Why? What is? Why is this happening now in 2015? You know, feel free to chip in at any time if you want to speak or express any kind of uh, view on this in terms of your own experiences that you may have had uh, in terms of uh, blatant <coughs> racism in your face kind of racism, not the, the underhand kind of you thought they were your friend and then they turn around and, and reveal the truth <laughs> later down the line. Yeah, we're those talking ones are the dangerous. Real, yeah, the, the kind of in your face stuff that attacks. 
Um, uh, do you feel that we're going to see a lot more of this as well? Do you feel that this is actually just the beginning of something? Yeah, well, like, and also to focus on where it's coming from. So right now we're on Galaxy, the only de-brainwashing station for so a no. reason, because we're fighting against that mass propaganda of serious, serial brainwashing. And yeah, it also in the studio, as mentioned before, we've got three men, three kings that are also fighting against this, this uh, mass indoctrination. We have Sister Wynn on the line. She Greetings, wants to Sister make Wynn. a quick contribution. Yeah. I just want to say, as an alert to all our people, is that these people are behaving to norm. And when I say that, I mean whenever there is a shift of power, i.e. the feel, the move of their power base being taken away from them, this is they react. It is the cave behavior of preservation and what we must do is be on our guard and be alert and physically and emotionally and psychologically fit when these things when we are confronted by these behaviors agreed yes i completely agree give thanks for that contribution sister win yeah bless blessings yeah so this is a direct question actually tabo like you must have come across these like incidents or, or events in in your photography photography world can you think of that the first time you might have come across anything like this or an event that addressed this situation like with racism and blatant racism um, i can't think of one specific incident but um, <clears throat> um there's been quite a few wow over the years Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, in terms of, say, for example, the Stephen Lawrence inquiry, um, uh, was it an, an event or a day or over a period of time that you were there photograph as a photographer for that? Actually, I've been following the Stephen Lawrence case since the first March that took place. I've actually got pictures of the family, Stephen Lawrence, mom and dad together when they were still together. Mm. I remember the Elephant Castle when uh, there was a bit of a commotion with the, um, I think the Nation of Islam was um, attending the case. Okay. And everybody had left to um, for lunch. Yeah. And they, they came back to like gain access and were prevented from entering the building again, even though they were there earlier. Mm. And as a result of that, there was a commotion. And I think one of them got arrested. The police prevented them from... Yeah, from re-entering the, right. the building. And in the process, one of, there was a scuffle. And one mm. of them got arrested. Mm. And I remember taking a picture of that. And I think it was printed in the Observer at the time. Yeah. You know, it was just funny that they were in the building. And I think they wanted to create a scene. Yeah. And actually prevented them from re-entering the building, and that to cause the scene. To cause the scene, mm. and they got and so the next day, all you heard was on the on the news. Mm. Nation of Islam tried to right. Yeah. So <laughs> perception, <laughs> right. Sorry to interrupt. To that, yeah, we've got to go into uh, that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll come right back to that. We've got um, Denton on the line. Greetings, Denton. Great. You are live on Galaxy Radio. I like just, I enjoy listening to your, your show. Give I've thanks. I work in um, East London and I work, like I'm a salesman, isn't it? so I drive around. So when I get the opportunity to listen to your show, it, it, it inspires me to do my job because you're talking about blatant racism. Mm. I feel like blatant racism. There's a positive to it. You might think I'm crazy for saying this, yeah, but there's a positive side to it because on a level, if you know someone's racist and they're showing it to you, they're doing you a favour. Yeah. Uh, you have to elaborate on that one, Denton. They're, do, they're showing you what... They really feel... Show you what side they're up here. Yeah. Mm. You get me? Yeah. If 
someone's going to mm. have the audacity, and I'm talking, I'm talking Rupert Murdoch. I looked at his um, Sun newspaper today when I was in one of my, um, and I, the headline, three, four. I thought, what? What was the headline? Could you just repeat that? Sorry. I see the headline, sweet and sour. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the Chinese president is in the UK today. <laughs> My days. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so the headline of the Sun newspaper reads, and I'm sorry to sound like I'm imitating a racist person because I'm not racist, but as a builder, the builder, your average builder that's drinking their kind of Red Bull would go, sweet and sour. Like that, mm. like that's their joke for the morning. Mm. Yeah, it's true. The and it's Hello? Yeah. China is dominating the Western society that we live in. And that's yeah. why, you know, David Cameron run along down to, to Jamaica to try and build up prison because China already built up roads. Yeah, yeah. And the, yeah, so we scramble everywhere. And... When I talk about hate and racism, I'm talking spe- specifically about Rupert Murdoch, the Australian, who seems to have so much influence over the minds of the people in this country. Yep. Mm. It's disgusting. Mm. See, that's another brainwashing place. Yeah. Know? And then you need to look at like people like Tesco's, where they don't even Tesco's don't like to employ black managers. You're right. I beg you going to 10 Tesco Metro today and see if you can find a black man or not. We won't. <laughs> it's a very easy but, test. And then you need, you need to go deep. And to me, it's like the blatant racism that you lot are talking about. Maybe you're, you're talking figuratively about the monkey word or, you know, blacky hair or whatever. But I think it's as blatant as, like, when you look at a school, a school system and all the boys that are ex- expelled or getting... Mm, the higher ethnic, ma- percentage. Ethnic... Um, and you've got predominantly white teachers, like, disciplining... Like, it's, it's funny, because I remember being at school and being called Tyrone, and my name ain't... I've got a Christian name. I've, I've, I've been called by all different names that weren't even my... Like, wow. I'm not a Christian, but I've got a, I've got a name that's very easy to remember. Mm. I remember a white teacher saying... To, a Wazunga teacher saying to me, Hey, Tyrone, can you keep the name? <laughs> and I weren't even talking. Mm. So, I, like, when you talk about blatant racism, I think it's there. But the British people like to hide behind the... The, the facade. The, the Americans are the scapegoats to say, oh, well, at least we never had slaves there. You're right. You're 100% right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Cause I'm, no, it's a, it's a great point because... No. Yeah. Yeah, no, what you're talking about, like, is hitting home the real point, and that is it's systematic. It's because it's everywhere, and like the focus is on, is on those that are most blatant with it, but it's coming from somewhere. So I'm glad you're mentioning Rupert Murdoch, and I'm glad you're also mentioning the schools as well, because these is where the people are being indoctrinated, and then you have the like the builder type that will come out of this racism, but it's being put in the head. Yeah, and if they're the ones buying a certain type of newspaper, and that newspaper is perpetuating that same kind of uh, racist talk, or kind of you know, what else? What's the other word for it? when they do that banter but it's like you know it's it's a bit more than that because you are training the people to see uh, the stereotypes first aren't you mm. yeah i watched two videos on youtube yesterday evening and they were pertaining to a new wave of racism coming from blacks and it had a black woman on a bus in north london and their husband cussing okay black man on a bus in tottenham cussing off a turkish old man now, I personally feel like that is black community because these secret iPhone recorders, yeah, I, I have a feeling that they're, they're, they've got something. For me, like, I'm the type of guy, if I can see a situation escalating, yeah, I'm not going to take out my camera phone and start filming. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit odd. But if I'm going to do that, because you've got to remember, when you pull out your phone to film something, yeah, if the police come along, they're allowed to confiscate your phone. And that's it. You automatically become a witness to whatever crime scene may be taken place. Mm. So a lot, of, a lot of these people operate like informers anyway. But mm. the way that they go about it, I think is extremely wrong. I know that they're trying to... I don't know what they're trying to do to be fair. But 
maybe they're trying to be good people, but in my mind, I feel like this surveillance society that we're living in is not healthy for freedom of expression <laughs> and privacy. Sure. And I feel that black people need to be super self-conscious when they're on the public transportation. To talk. Because an NF or a BMP person, or in, what do they call them now? EDL. Defense. Whatever they want to call themselves today, yeah? Wazungu Nation, yeah? Them want to see them, you know, yeah? And send them to jail. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, I'm trying to... My... It's like... It's blatant. Because they're using Apple technology and technology as a slavery system to deport us back to these jails that they're planning to build in Jamaica. Mm. So, mm. my friend is telling me that as much as we're here and we that we've got our passports and whatnot and we can and we can travel worldwide, we need to start investing in having our our British base, but we need, also need to invest in Africa, the Caribbean, even China. You're right, a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? But you need to put your bag you can't have all your eggs in one basket. You need to have your fingers in more than one pie if you're British mm. and you're you're born British and you're black. Yeah, so... You can't rely on this country because it don't love you. Definitely. So what's your business, quickly, Denton? Well, I'm working for a major corporation. Um, I don't want to say too much about, about that. I can tell off, off air, or if I was going to a event where you lot was, I would tell you face-to-face, but yeah. I work for a big organisation and they're trying to do sugar tax. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, see. Oh, sugar tax. That's how big my organisation that I work for is. That sugar tax, you know. Boy. Well, I hope you got your own venture running still. Yeah, well, I'm plan- look, I've got plans, man. I don't want to say too much. I've got plans, but I'm going to carry on this <clears throat> mess- on this. Give thanks. you got to be on it. But I wanted to just throw in my little knowledge there because I feel like you've got, I've got it on point. Blessings. I'm slightly older than you, but I know it. I'm, I just need to just have Probably my not as brain in it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably older than me. Because I, I'm falling out of love with this country hard. Mm. See, I never loved this country. I never did love it. I'm saying. Yeah, I hear you. I'm, I'm just not feeling it. And when where you are younger than me and you're, and you're talking sense, it's making me realise that, you know, I might have to go South America, I might have to go... I'm going to have to go to Jamaica. I'm going to have to do this. I, I stay, I'm, I'm not getting buried here. Go, Africa? <laughs> Africa, wherever. Yeah, hey. We'll come with you. We're not, we're not, we're not the global minority. One thing you must know, you're not, you're never the global minority. True. Anybody of a brown African skin, we are the global majority. You can go anywhere, my friend. That's Any true. Any country. Yeah? You don't have to watch your back when you're walking down the road. Yeah, two talk. Zungu, man, they can't go anywhere. They can't go anywhere and do whatever they like everywhere. So that's why they got this attitude in their city of London. Yeah? Mm, yeah, they're trying to... Gonna, but yeah, give thanks. Give thanks to the call, Denton. Yeah, and the contribution. And please call again. Like, you know, it's been a great contribution. So do call us again. Okay. I'll... Yeah, keep it locked in. Blessings. Blessings. Yeah, can I correct something as well very quickly? Um, this yeah. is Kunka Dread, by the way. Yeah. Big up. Uh, greetings, family. Yeah, so thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, in relation to um, recording, if you see Stop and Search, um, if you're mindful, you know, you're sort of like around, sort of, I think it's around two or three metres away, but a little, you know, I mean, certainly Tabo can probably tell me from a journalistic point of view, but you can actually record. It's a public space. So I would say, you know, whilst be mindful, um, you know, obviously watch your back, you know, you know don't have a conversation. But you literally, you should, you should take out your phone because that could save a life. Mm. So definitely do that. So <coughs> yeah, I, would, I think you know, it is so. legal. I think you can. I don't yeah, think I'm they can sure take you, it yeah, off you. No, they can't. That's what I've heard. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to um, observe mm. and record what they're doing. Mm. As observed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good time. <laughs> oh, as observed. That's what the exhibition is called. So you're allowed to observe the police. You, pay me, you, know. you just don't <laughs> you just don't um interfere or 
say anything to them. Mm. Mm. And I think I urge that strongly because I think that's, you know, and it kind of, you know, obviously <clears throat> kind of lends to what you were saying about, about this sort of what's going on on the bus. Because even with that, that brother in Tottenham, he actually threw the Zimmer frame off the bus about, uh, never mind insulting a man, an elder, um, regardless of the race. He actually insulted him and dashed him off the bus and Zimmer frame then follow to show the age and the physicality of the man. And there is something going on, but nonetheless, what it does show you is, yes, there is anger, not just within our own community, but outside, because there's an influx of different people coming in. And, you know, bear, let's bear in mind, some of these people, you know, are Europeans. Mm. So, you know, so that's xenophobia, that's not racism. They're mm. of the same race, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's been manifested in different ways right now. Mm. But what you, do, what you are seeing is, is a lack of intervention from this poetry sister you mentioned. Mm. One ones and ones are watching it kicking off. And our sister Tolu talked about a similar thing that happened to her, like I think it was seven, eight months ago, where, you know, it's the silent majority that is that I put the blame to. Yeah, they're not doing that. It's that, that silent majority kind of, not, they yeah. feel like they're watching a TV screen or something. It's like they, they pacify, they become... Uh, numb it's like yeah. they're just watching something that's not r really tangible to them so they exactly. just sit there and watch mm. and they don't feel that they can actually intervene well it's our disconnecting with this uh, with humanity and yeah. i think that you know that's what tabo does with his work obviously nicholas with you know regards the outreach and what you, you know what the family's doing here at galaxy is that we you know we're trying to build that bridge you know what i'm saying because you know i don't think there's anyone in this room irrespective of what's going on would watch an elder, a young girl, or whoever. Or anybody. Being, exactly, being yeah. sort of vilified by a group of people or certainly being insulted. I've seen it in Peckham. Where I, I physically had to stand in front of a, a brother insulting a sister in, from Ethiopia, telling her to go back where she come from, and I've actually yeah. stood in there just to deflate it, so he's almost having to talk through me to, mm. get, to, to get to the insults to her. And just, just by doing that, it kind of obviously... Deflates the situation, but you actually engage the anger. You then mm. sort of have to draw that in, in, in another way. And mm. I think that, you know, we have to kind of learn some of these sort of tactics because we can do the rare, rare thing, and that's another thing we can deal with. Or we can just observe and, yeah. and silently, and that's a problem, right? That's now. a huge problem. problem. That's a big or just problem get your right phone now. out and just record and don't do anything but, else. You know, so just to mm. take note in terms of what the previous caller just said <clears throat> about China, mm. I think what we're not doing is garnering enough economic power. Now, the question is for people to run to China, or as our uh, prime uh, mayor did, was it last year or the other year? Into back. India, it's about economic empowerment. Yeah, we don't really have that. Mm. And the question is, when you have that, people then come to you. Mm. If you have something that people want, they will always come to you. Mm. They feel that they've got you've got nothing to offer. Then you know people talk to you anyhow. Mm. You know, <clears throat> and that's it. I mean, I wouldn't say that I find it with the people that I work with, but you know, I get people making comments. Oh, you're always hard working. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. And that's why I like, you know, you get that phrase, that's why I like talking to you. Mm. You're not one of them, if that kind of makes sense, mm. you know. But, you know, we're, you know, we're a hard group of working people. Sometimes we can't see the, the ceiling, if that kind of makes sense. And mm. I think that's the reason why, you know, people empowering people and I do what we do. Because, you know, sometimes some of the young people that I work with, you know, don't know where they're going. It's not like the chance is not there, mm. Mm. but they can't see where they're going. They feel that it's for everybody else, you know. And again, you know, they're brought up in an era of, um, what? how can I call it, in the digital age. Yeah, yeah. Where everything is just bombarded to them mm. on a TV, mm. you know. I can give you an example. I've got a 22-year-old daughter, and throughout the whole time we live together, we very rarely watch TV. In short, as soon as, as, soon as uh, EastEnders came on, it was like, yep, time for bed. Didn't matter how old she was, you know, both my children. And I think, you know, as parents, I think we should stop Got to manage our children that. to watch TV. We mm. should get them to stop looking at stuff on the internet. Because, you know, all these all these services are, you know, belong to individuals that want to, you know, brainwash us to make us think in a different way. Now, you know, this morning I was watching like the other, like the guy, you know, I was watching something about Gaddafi mm. on, on YouTube. And it was funny because I'm sitting and listening to the spiel that's coming out. And mm. I'm thinking, if I didn't know what I knew, mm. I'm not saying he's a good guy, I'm not saying he's a bad guy, 
But the way it was portrayed, it was almost like it's been, well, the film's been made after his death. Yeah. And it's a complete different portrayal, as if he didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the yeah. question is, look at Libya now and look at it then. Yeah. I'm not saying what he did was right. I'm not saying what he did was wrong. But there's a big difference mm. between, between the truth and lies and how it was, mm. if that kind of makes sense. And the thing is, you know, we believe a lot of what's been put out. Mm. So, for example, you know, I'll constantly be talking to people and people are saying, but this is what happened. I'm like, you got that from Google. You got that from YouTube. Mm. You can't believe everything that has been told. That's you, have to, you have to read recognize. it and research it. Mm. And yeah. I think we've got to a point now is that we're just relying on what we're being told by individuals that are being that are crafting and making these films mm. you know to say that this is how things are yeah you know and 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 mm. because it comes from such a powerful source we're just like yeah yeah like bbc is like yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even when you said about the suit and sour thing well, you know i've not seen the headline but the sour is obviously about i mean you break it down obviously it's a cuss but the sour is about their human rights record Mm. So, so you have to kind of be mindful. Yeah, yeah, we can run the defense of certain things, but you know, China ain't no friend of Africa. No, and no, so when, no. You know, and I, oh, and as I said, I've, you you know, know, I've lived. No, that's what I'm saying. One. But I've lived because <laughs> I have, you know, because obviously I've lived there and I've seen how they treat the workers, the Ethiopian workers, where I was at. Yeah, you know I mean, they're man's on building site in flip flops. Mm. You know what I mean, forget no hard hat business. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so, and that's just Dessa. And so when they go to, to, again, Jamaica, you'll know the roads that they're building is a direct road that will go just to a factory mm. that they're running. Mm. You know what I mean? So when they talk about these roads, rare, 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 it's the roads to go to their thing. They're just on a train in Ethiopia, some, you know, some high-speed train. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like something like 26 burr to get on it. That's the basic price of a three course meal in Ethiopia. Right. So it's not for the grassroots man no, going to work and trying to think. It's basically the Chinese, the, you know, elite. relatively middle class ones or the ones that they just feel say you've got enough salary to get to our to a, our factory, basically, because mm. it only goes. It's a train that goes one way. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, the, so we have to recognize that. Yeah, all this. And that's why I think even the race argument, the racism. Okay, we can all call up and talk about anecdotal moments when we had racism. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I grew, I told you I grew up in Swindon, Wiltshire, throughout the 1980s, 60s, 70s. Grew up in that. So no one's going to bore me with stories of their own little moments on the bus and what have you. Mm. I think now is like racism now is stagnant. It's boring. When black people say, wow, that's racism, mm. people are yawning. I mm. physically see ones and ones yawning now because racism is so rife that now you've got a brother calling up, the brother just then saying, yeah, yeah, you know, like almost have to say, I'm not racist, but brother, you can't be racist, but you mean? It's like now they've actually tricked us so much that they think that we can actually be racist yeah, yeah, without yeah. power. Yeah. And like we said, like Nicholas has already said, power only respects power. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? The powerful yeah. will never give power to the powerless. True yeah. talk. And that's why we have to recognize that the economics is like what Nicholas is dealing with, Tabo is skill sets and what have you, is getting in the work, getting in the monies and what have you. And the, the little bits that we try to engender with our own African creativity mm -hmm. is saying give a platform to ones and ones keep that money circling around and that is the power base right there. Mm -hmm. mm. As you saw with Auntie Jean's team. Yes. Exactly. Ram out. Yeah. Bless up and raise her up and yeah. look at that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And that was energy, right? That's yeah. why I don't want to sort of, do, you know, was there racism in that room there? No. We might have spoke it. about it. We might have looked at certain elements of where it comes from, mm. you know, mm -hmm. regards birth of a nation. You know what I mean? But when you looked around the young ones, why would you want to plant that seed of why there's racism out there to that young child. Mm. No, man, it's sometimes you have to kind of look at where we are right now. Yes, we know it, you know, it's imperialism is, you know, racism is a product of imperialism. So the empire washed that across the seas. So we now know that. What do we do with that? Mm. You know what I mean? So I could ring your station up all day long and tell you, oh, yeah, last week this happened and what have you. And I know, say, ones and ones in this room, anybody above the age of 35 will be said, sure, we know that. But mm. I know you've got a call, sir. So. So I'll let that off. No, 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 course, no, 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 no. But actually, yeah. this is a perfect opportunity to talk about as observed. Because that's a, <laughs> that, well, it's a self-explanatory, isn't it? So, first of all, what inspired as, as observed? Uh, basically, with um, Nicholas, um, he kept asking me to do something in the <laughs> space that he runs. And he wanted to do something um, during the time of Black History Month. Mm. So I just um, thought, how could I um, present work 
that would look, you know, professional mm. and not just attract, you know, black people. But I just wanted everybody to say it. I wanted um, students, and I've had we've had a lot of art students coming into the building. Oh, excellent! What from Goldsmiths? From Goldsmiths. UAL. From UAL. From Camberwell. Yeah. You know, and they really um, they like the way the space being used. Mm. So even though the work is 100% um, African centered, yeah. do you want to say black? Yeah, African centered. Yeah. And I think people can appreciate it for the um, topics it's trying to deal with, and also for the way it's been presented, which is professional. Yeah, respect. Can I just sorry say on to that, interrupt. We've just got, got a caller on sorry. the line. Sure. Greetings, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, brother Paul. Uh, to your guest, and good afternoon to the galaxy. Let's well, good afternoon, brother. I didn't get the um, the main purpose of the conversation, but what I say, I caught a drift of some of the arguments. And uh, one of the things which I heard, which uh, I found into maybe correct, is the. Uh, summing up of what racism and the, and the necessary or unnecessary of observing or taking into account what racism is. While, as far as I'm concerned, and from my own research, the best, um, the best information for summing up what racism is today is basically put forward by Nelly Fuller Jr. and uh, Francis Quest Wilson. They define racism as a system, and I agree, it's a system, that's what it is. It's a system of um, what they refer to as white supremacy. Um, I call white extremism. It's a system, and it's a, it's a global system. So it, it, it's not a matter of whether you observe it or not. It's a system which has been put in place, which affects every asset of your life, whether you like it or not. It affects your education. It affects your schooling. It affects your, just your ability to survive. How do you get your money? through the same system? How do you educate yourself? Through the same system. You know, so to say that, okay, you just don't, you know, don't pay no attention to it or whatever, is, is a misnomer. It's, it's not correct. Um, the only, the only solution, you the no solution which they talk about, which is paramount and pinnacle, that solution is this, is that we as a people should show more respect to one another and respect for our differences and respect for our own um, ideologies and systems, and eventually build a system which can compete, if so, annihilate the system of white supremacy and racism. So going back to the, the, argu the argument, the fundamental point is that it's a system. Yeah, no, this, that's in, the, in, first of all, thank you for the, the powerful contribution. And um, that is in, in context, that is in... Uh, in, that is in, in alignment with what was being said before, previously. Yeah, well, I just want to make it clear, not just for the listeners, that if they want further information, they should um, do some research and they can look to Francis Quest Wilson's work or look at Nelly Fuller's work and see the exact and the more accurate description of what racism is. It's a yes. system. It's a global system. Mm -hmm. And until we start talking about how to annihilate that system, we ain't talking about nothing. All we're doing is playing. All we're doing is participating and contributing. We ain't killing races really at time. Doing. Because even in our so-called business ventures, we are contributors within that system, contributing to our own downfall. There's no way around it. You can't, you can't claim to be um, making success when you're paying taxes to a system which is set up to annihilate you. It's ludicrous. So the only discussion there should be is how are you, as an individual, going to take down this system? Mm -hmm. and, if you, and if you're not talking about that, when you're not talking about anything, I'll leave it there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Respect. Respect, Brother Paul. Yes. All right. So powerful statement there. We were just sorry to interrupt you, Tabo. I think Brother Paul just really needed to call in to make that, that point in terms of racism being a system. But you, uh, you were just saying about the actual exhibition that's on at the moment. Yes, which is a, a series of pictures, mostly shot in the 90s, and they deal with um, just key events that have taken place. So 
You have the Stephen Lawrence inquiry. Um, you have the Joy Gardner case. You have deaths in custody. So I just um, presented a few pictures to illustrate those key moments or mm. those pregnant moments in um, black history. Yeah, I mean, it's very... I mean, there's certain things that just came to my head in terms of that because... So photography for you is, uh, is I would assume, is an expression of um, creativity. It's an expression of creativity. It's also a way for me to say the things I want to say. I don't think I'm the most articulate person, <laughs> but um, I feel when I use a camera, I can get a lot across. Mm. So in terms yeah, of it, it speaks being, a thousand words for sure. Yeah, it really yeah. does. And in terms of the, the reason why I'm asking that is because as uh, people that we, we, who just want to express uh, creativity, it's oftentimes that we have to come from a viewpoint of uh, something that's political or, or a statement or something we have to say to uh, let people know um, what is happening as a... Uh, that is oppressing our people or, or you know that is um against our human rights there's there seems to be that angle that has to be where we're where we're expressing from even with uh spoken word um a lot of the the richer kind of um spoken word will come from a place that is about our pain or you know truth and substance yeah so you know i, I guess what i'm trying to ask is in terms of um the beauty of that, the craft, the craftsmanship that goes into your work, like see, see, watching it, for example, that first shot that I saw. Um, okay, I have to just catch my mouth from the floor because I can't believe who's just walked into <laughs> the studio. <laughs> Apologies, listeners. I was trying to go really in with that point. <gasps> Yeah, there's, there's been earthquakes, like, all of a sudden, like... Thunderclap. Sisters yeah, thunderclap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were talking about legends in, earlier in the building, but another one has just entered. What kind of, The date? What is the date? This has got to be recorded. This is, yeah, this is special day. This is a special, <laughs> special day. This is another, like, million men. I woke up then. this morning and saw the sun and the, the blue sky, but I never imagined. I never. <laughs> Tell <laughs> you. <laughs> In all the wildest dreams I've had, I never. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Am I sleeping? The Godfather is in the no, building. No, the Godfather. Big up. Oh, see, big up. Happy birthday. No, yeah, you're not no, interrupting no, yeah. at all. We, we've got a shout out, as we do. We've got a shout out the Godfather, David J, the pugilist, the vocal pugilist yeah. in the Pass. in the building, you know, that inspired a lot of us young spoken word artists to, to be the artists that we are here today. Give thanks. But yeah, we was asking um, Tabo the about come. the as observed. Actually, I don't know, you, were you going get to get off your question? It was that. It was just really about how do you feel about the fact that, you know... Um, you know, it is a great platform in terms of letting people know, but do you sometimes also want to have, uh, or do you think about um, a world where it wouldn't have to be um, always that, that we were trying to express as a people? Does I'm that make sense? Does that make sense? Photography is like, it's similar to poetry. Mm. I got inspired, when I started doing photography, I got inspired by people like Public Enemy, NWA, just the stuff they were talking about, brand Nubian, mm. and those kind of subjects that they picked and talked about, that's what I used to go out and try and photograph. So the first time I ever heard of the nation of Islam, when Ice Cube had them on their, on their album cover. <laughs> Seen. And when I saw that picture, I was like, wow. And since then, I've been going out taking pictures of the nation. Okay. So it's very similar to poetry. Um, you kind of study your craft, the technical aspect, mm -hmm. mm. but the rest just depends on your politics mm. and your, if you like, maturity, mm -hmm. because you can really expose yourself with photography. Mm. Right. So you got to be very careful. And so when you see these Caucasian people doing pictures, 
they're very, very clever in what they do. Right. Very deliberate. So they could go to Africa and, you know, a village, for instance, or yeah. somebody's house and decide what to include in a frame. Yeah. Right. So you got to be aware like that when you're doing photography. So when I take pictures of people of African descent in, in England, in, in Africa, or in America, I'm very careful. Mm. When I went to the Million Man March, I mean, I respect people putting on the Million Man March. You know, so I think I owe them mm. in a way. And so I'm very careful how I compose my pictures because your composition could say, it could either go one way or go the other yeah. mm. in terms of politics. Mm. So you just got to be mindful like that. So when I hear poets like yourself, mm. um, I wanted you to get involved with the exhibition from the beginning because <laughs> yeah. I just admire yeah. the, craft the way the craft and the way... And David J has been an inspiration from mm. time. From time. <laughs> David J. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. J. 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 Everyone here can attest to that for man. sure. It's definitely. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I like, I like hip hop. I like poetry, and I think those two um, um, forms of art have inspired me a great deal, mm. so, especially in terms of subjects and the things that poets talk about. Mm. So they're the sort of things that I try and go out and photograph. Yeah, I mean, in the exhibition itself, there was one fo- that all of them are just amazing. But the one with, where you described the Nation of Islam, brother that was walking past, and then you, how you captured that brother in front At of the, the Stephen, Stephen Lawrence, Lawrence inquiry. inquiry. Like, when you say a picture, like, speaks, speaks a thousand words, yeah. that one there is just like, yeah. That is that adage, like it is that, like you see it, and then it means so much because even looking back now from 2015 onto a photo that was that what Nin- 1996, 1996, like it sh- it shows how much needs to be done in terms of work, and that image even shows you that. Mm. So it's it's not, it's 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 a timeless photo, mm-hmm. and actually I feel all your photos are like you capture the, when you talk about craft. Like you bring that, you make it timeless. So it's it's not just, uh, you know, one stuck in the moment of '96. It don't even look like '96. It's like it doesn't have a time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, that's it's it's big. So I wanted to ask you, like, what inspired you? Obviously, the Ice Cube <laughs> <laughs> for, for, um, influenced you to to cover the nation. But what inspired you to go into photography in the first place? Well, actually, um, when I started doing photography, I was actually in Zimbabwe at the time. And I just finished my GCSE, or O-level, they used to call it, in <laughs> photography. I mean, in Zimbabwe. And my mom, was, my mom wanted me to do cinematography. She okay. really wanted me to go into film. Cool but mom. something to do with art <laughs> and stuff. My mom's very... Um, she's, um, how could I describe her? You know, she's an academic, well-traveled. Okay. You know, she gave me exposed me to a great deal, Mm. like in terms of travel. I had a very, very rich life. Mm. And so she wanted me to do photography, um, cinematography. But at the same time, I met uh, somebody who is now one of my very oldest friends. And he had just come back from Russia. He was a South African exile. And he studied um, photography. And he used to take pictures of us just messing around in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And he would like do all kinds of tricks with a camera, like lie on the floor and take pictures. And so he inspired. And when I saw that, I thought, wow, this is what I want to do. Mm. And I started taking pictures from there. I was initially going to study photography in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And I think I went around looking and eventually decided to come back to England. And then start beginning. And, yeah, and I started, um, you know, went to college and so forth. So did it start off political or is that something that came along? Well, to begin with, I started, I was doing like fashion pictures. I used to like this South African photographer called Koto Bolofo. Mm. It's like the world's best black African photographer. 
Many people haven't heard of him, but mm. if you Google him, you'll see. What's his name? Koto Bolofo. Koto Bolofo. Yes, yeah. Okay. And so I used to like doing fashion pictures, which I did for a long while. And as I got older and started going to, uh, you know, when you listen to people like Public Enemy, Brad Nubian, mm. you kind of think, wow. You know, fashion pictures are pretty to look at, but what, what are they saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I started going to meetings and, you know, meeting more people. Then I thought, yeah, I want to do photojournalism, mm. which is currently what I do now, editorial photography. Yes, yes, yes. I like to have some heavy, serious text with my pictures. Yeah. I want somebody to uh, help to, like, you know, write an article to go with the pictures. Mm. So that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, and, and like your photos, you, I mean, you worked with The Guardian, like what is The Observer as well? Yeah, I've had pictures in The Observer, The Guardian, Time Magazine. Right. So all of those people, that's the, the density of the, the articles that will follow from yes. the yeah. photo. Yeah. It's broadsheet newspapers, basically. Yeah. 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 And the, the image as well, like, that is going to gear the article in a certain way as well, I, I might imagine. Exactly. That's the, yeah, so you kind of, even though you're not writing the article, mm. you kind of help them illustrate. You, um, you give them a direction or you give them whoever is reading that article uh, a starting point. Right. So however, th because, you know, like certain, uh, even in those newspapers, you might find something that, is is based in truth and that could be down to the the photographs that is it's interesting images images are, are used a lot in this world on a, even on a subliminal subconscious level to control and direct our thoughts it's and a minds. it's a big 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 industry very very political and i think more of us need to get involved in it mm. Um, if you look at all the publications, The Guardian, The Observer, Time magazine, they spend a fortune because they understand the power of these pictures. But also what's important is who is taking these pictures. Right. You know, that's very crucial. It's very important. And I think more of us need to be taking these pictures because we can point in the right certain way. issues highlight mm. certain issues that need to be highlighted that, that need to be highlighted with the right focus and the right angle yeah I was just going to say I'd be very disappointed if the sun or the mirror or anybody like that used one of my pictures <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's true because I was just about to ask in terms of the platform <laughs> they got money bro yeah and, and I'm glad they have it I mean I've had pictures in the evening standard mm. you know but I've because the kind of pictures I do and the just the idea behind them, it's not. So people like The Guardian mm. would often pick up my pictures. Mm. So that's the kind of language that, that they're I'm speaking. using. Yeah. 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 So for people that want to get into, because you're saying that, actually, no, first, before I ask that question, like, are you, you're a rare, obviously rare photographer in your own right, but... Like as an African photographer, photographer, do you find yourself like amongst many of us, or not really at all? I must say, lately, I mean, there's always, there've always been great um, um, African photographers. All the photographers that I look up to are African. Mm. So you have somebody like Roy DeCava, he used to take pictures in New York in the '60s. You have somebody like Gordon Parks. Mm. who was the first black photographer to work for Life magazine. Okay. And he made the film Shaft. Seen. You know, and, and then I mentioned Koto Bolofo before. So there's people, but I find now there's a lot of young African people getting into photography. Yeah, I see it on is, Tumblr. Yeah, yeah. Like in the blog world, the blog world has opened up a whole new world of um, African like there's even a, something called a uh, Afropolitan, yeah. Where yeah. there's a the whole like subculture of African people that has emerged, and and images is a big thing. Instagram as well, Tumblr. Like yeah, how do you find that world in comparison to the original world of photography? 
Like it's, anyone can kind of be a photographer these days. Like no, or, but it's no, it, I look at Tumblr. <laughs> I look at Tumblr a lot, and I'm kind of inspired by a lot of the stuff I see. It just helps me keep up to date. Mm. You know, um, as far as um, um, it just makes photography a bit more um, accessible to yeah. people. Which I think is good. Mm. So you're not one of those elitists that, like, mm. you know, they're not using the right kind of camera. And that's a, <laughs> you know, that this old school camera that you. No, I said to use. somebody the other day that iPhone users won't replace um, photojournalist with their um, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's a good starting point yeah. for right. people. Okay. And I don't think it's like. It doesn't matter what camera you use. It's just your ideas, your politics. Yeah. I think co- politics is like key. That's what people don't understand because that's what's going to determine what you spend your time researching. Mm. You know, so like I said, you could expose yourself with photography. So all the issues you see on my in this exhibition as observed, yeah. those are the issues I feel very strongly about. Mm-hmm. You know, so to a certain extent, I'm exposing myself. Right, yeah. In that regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Kunga wrote an article and said, I was reading the article that he wrote on me, and he said something about, I think he referred to me as an activist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't see myself as an activist, because when you do this kind of work, you have to remain... Neutral. 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 Mm. Or partial. Mm. You know, yeah. um, that that's an important point. There's um, a, I cannot remember his name, but you probably have heard or know who he is. Is a famous photographer who shot uh, images from the Biafran War. Um, do you remember? Yep. Do you know, he, and he had some famous images of the the young children with the swollen bellies. And yes, yeah, they yeah. actually were the images that were plastered in the West to kind of highlight what was happening, and he did a recent uh, documentary which I watched and it was when he was saying that about that side of photography which is is, is quite um, I don't want to say it in a bad way but kind of dark side of it where it is that kind of I am just an observer mm. here in this situation and or I'm here just to take photos so if he was even going in about certain parts of uh, certain war torn areas he'd, he'd witnessed really quite just horrible th- things mm, mm. but it's it's that detachment you you can't um intervene you're just lit- you're no. literally showing the yeah. picture of what is happening in that moment and it's it's similar to what we were saying earlier about those ones that will get their camera out and you know just they're just there to film the moment capture it and then put it out for others to see it's it's just how do you feel about that yeah, even the- though I, I say i'm an observer yeah i lean Towards the African side. Okay, mm. yeah. In terms of how I portray somebody. If I took a picture of a, a young person, a young African male person, because of my politics, I'm going to try and represent him a mm-hmm. certain way. Mm. But when I present it on a gallery wall or in an exhibition, I don't... I don't... Um, you're not able to um, see what side I'm coming from. Okay. You let the image speak for itself. I let the image speak for itself. So for this exhibition, for instance, you have... Everybody's coming to see the exhibition. And even mm. though it's a strong black exhibition, it's got Marcus Garvey mm. Stephen Lawrence, he's dealing with some serious issues. Mm. But people are um, people come into the, the space and there's loads of discussions and everything. And I try at that moment not to put my views my personal views mm. Mm. across because I think I may have done it already yeah. <laughs> <In the> image <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's already influenced because it is what it is yeah, uh, uh. yeah yeah. so we just talk about the aesthetics and how it looks yeah, yeah. and the white walls yeah. and yeah. the frame what do you think about racism <laughs> in the UK <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> The images are so powerful, though, and there's a variety of them as well. Like, the Marcus Garvey is the first one that you see as you enter, and yeah. I feel that's 
perfectly, brilliantly placed. Yeah, actually, I have that, yeah, I have that, that picture in my, in my living room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then also, so my take on it when I was walking around to see the the up, you might erase. You and then accomplish what you will. Yeah, and then to go through and to see the Million Man March, which is kind of like a story, and then you go into the two young ladies who are sat in a way and and they're not so upright, I would say. It's you know but you can still see there's power and strength within them and mm. themselves. So it's like it was just that starting point going into a um a real story in, in terms of the theme. And that's how that's what I got from it. From the yeah, so you have Marcus Garvin and the untapped yeah. potential. Yeah, exactly. Of the others, like yeah. the Brixton, the Brixton, shot, yeah. Yeah. and then the two sisters that are on the on the bench. Mm-hmm. Like you see the power, mm-hmm. which which Marcus Garvey is referring to when he says, "Up, you mighty race." Mm. You see the power, but it's untapped, which is why yeah. the need for the quote is, mm. "Up, you mighty race." Yeah. Yeah, it's about and and these kind of things are about inspiration as well to get that untapped power unleashed onto the world. Yeah. That's what we got ahead for. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, the role of the photojournalist is to w- reveal the truth. Or what would you what would you say specifically? It is to show things as they are. So um, some of the things may not be pleasant. You know, they may not look pretty like the. You said the girls, they looked like it was untapped power, mm. but there was strength in the. So you're basically showing things as they are. Mm. And, but for me, I like, I like to have images that look. Everything for me is about look. So I want my images to look good. Mm. And I want them to be relevant so that. So those images you're talking about, one young people, like, because I deal with maybe Stephen Lawrence po- political type events, mm. but then I have other pictures that are not so political mm. that can draw in other people, right? Like young people. Mm. So that's where those images of those young girls come in because mm. of just the way they dressed mm. and the pictures of the brothers, their hairstyle. Mm. Other people can relate to that. Mm. And then that way you can expose them to the rest of your work. It's palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah but even in that, it's still political though, isn't it? The sh- yes, it is. Isn't it? It's, yeah. it's kind of the story it's setting, the, the background, the situation in terms of like, uh, the social standards yeah, and all of those yeah. kind of things is it's all political, isn't it? Yeah, uh, within that. Uh, but then it's brothers, it's yeah. just that they can, you know, it's it's more appealing. Yes, more appealing. In, That's in, in that sense, but it's brilliant. You know, I'm smiling now. I'm smiling really wide because I'm just <laughs> there's just so many um, great brothers in the building. Yeah. <laughs> We've got kings and gods and godfathers amongst us. Yeah, you know I mean? like I'm overwhelmed a little bit, but it's good. It's great stuff. I'm gonna t- we're gonna take a little break, and just to give us a, a moment to sip some water and, and digest all the things that we've been talking about. Yeah, and we've got loads to talk about still in a very short space of time. Yeah, yeah, including an event coming up this very evening. We're Tonight, talking about huh? politics, and and we got we got to talk about that one. But yeah. Give thanks.
the spirit of the river up in your hands. She's a sweet and steady giver. She'll turn your tears of sadness into gladness. Praises to Oshun. Yeah, yeah, Oshun is the spirit of the river up in your hands. She's a sweet and steady giver. She'll turn your tears of sadness into gladness. Praises to Oshun. Creator, Petal, Olu Dumare, Olu Mankoma, and Yame, Ama, Neter, all traditional African names for the one God. Abosun, Orisha, Loa, Neteru, aspects of the divine, and Samanfo, Sheps, Egungung, ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. Black notes, libation, a spiritual offering, a prayer with props to God, to earth, with water, fire, air, breath of life of the creator, divine presence, wisdom, pow, 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 connecting us to ancestors, Queen and Zinga, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Kwame and Kuma, Patrice Lumumba, Malcolm X, Stephen Biko, Biko. Connecting us to ancestors, struggles to progress, past to present, enlightenment to African cultural, spiritual space, gracing the cosmos, the universe with aspects of the all, encompassing our entire being, singing in harmony with joy, in pleasure, beyond measure, in passion for life, voiced like the song of the river. Flowing with the sensual grace of Oshun. Oshun, Heheru, Nana Esi, Oshun. Representing the beautiful, the feminine features of life. Lightly dancing to a timeless rhythm. In tune with the tone of a spiritual offering. A prayer with props to the highest. Down to earth with water, fire, air. Breath of life of the creator. Divine presence, wisdom, power, 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 like the nucleus, the core, black, sweet, black, woman, energy, strength, black, man, energy, complementing, black, woman, energy, unifying, connecting us to ancestors, Martin Luther King, Queen T, Imhotep, Zumbi, David Walker, Nat Turner, Ida B. Wells, Marcus Garvey, Medgar Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Fred Hampton, George Jackson, Bob Marley, Peter Taj, John Henry Clark, Fela, Fela, Anikulapo, Kuti, connecting us to ancestors, struggles to progress, past to present to future, transcending space and time, ancient to future, black no. Libation and pie, a spiritual donation to creation, creatively opening the way from this day forward for divine melody, presence, rhythm, wisdom, word. Gather round, come one, come all Mothers, brothers, cousins and uncles Your time, my time Each one, teach one more life Pure vibe, keep on, speak drums Reach up a deep high We never give up, the beat's struck with beat's track The message is love From Maroons to Marcus Mosiah We go higher, no we don't tire Booming, blooming like a sunflower 
drum power Turn it up louder, rise and shine now Your soul is golden, step forth the times now The door is open, heart of a lion Walk like an elephant, it's all evident All signs are heaven sent, game on Stay strong, pray for the lost souls Standing on the crossroads, where only God knows Standing at the crossroads Standing at the crossroads Stand in your power, don't you know Now is the time for you to rise and shine The doors are open, the time is right the Silence is golden, tonight's the night You ain't gonna wrong my rights So you can stop with your gas and hype Now pass the mic and let me shine some light Birds fly high and they like to glide I like to ride, I don't like to fight I take time with, moving through the cycle of life You boost crime with, moving on the road with your bike I get live when I hear a drum beat and a rhyme In due time, no be peace, no police, no crime Food time, refuel, you gotta feed your mind Let's pass the fight, snakes and ladders to climb Leave your baggage behind, catch me on the front line Strength and numbers can bang, if you seek you will find Know that we are the vibe, I'm just speaking my mind If you're with it then ride, catch me standing in line Standing at the crossroads Standing at the crossroads Stand in your power, don't you know Now is the time for you to rise and shine This is it, we gotta walk like the elephants Cross the road with a definite elegance Walk proud and our speech is eloquent Our feet are carrying the beat The heat is heavy and the street's not ready for the sun to rise Still no one can't stop time A bright light shines the right vibe We all outside on a journey to the most high This is it, we gotta fly like we eagles To the top past the highest steeple I wanna go where the people are equal The land ain't got us in no deep pull of evil We rise and shine like the stars in the vast night There is no space, there is no time We are the light and the energy don't ever die Whatever path we carve will change course when we rise When we Standing rise. Standing at the crossroads Standing at the crossroads Stand in your power, don't you know Now is the time for you to rise and shine And we are back on air. Galaxy FOE, the only, the only, the only, the one and only D brainwashing station. Yeah, and you're listening right in. You're locked in to, uh, I guess it's going to be a classic show by um, from Stella B and, and Nat, Nat Nye. Nye. And in the studio, we have Tabo. We have Kunga Dread. And we have Nicholas from Pen People. So Kunga Dread from a Jim Crow <laughs> Collective. <laughs> and we got Tabo, the esteemed journal photographer. And of course, <laughs> the presence is felt, even though it's off the mic for now. But David mm-hmm. J, the pugilist, the oh, vocal wow. pugilist, the godfather of spoken word and yeah. UK rap. <laughs> I am mean. Yeah. I am me. I am me. <laughs> <laughs> We're feeling blessed right now. Yeah, we, we are. We are blessed. We give thanks for energy. The door's always open, by the way. Exactly. Why? It's always open. It's always open. It's here. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah, he hasn't said no anyway. <laughs> 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 so we've got um, a text that's come through. Uh, Ra, rise, homage, salute. Nat Nye and Empress Stella B and your guest in Revolution, yes, with your passionate and powerful show, Educational African Culture and History, Vudum Garvey lives and you are our black history all the time, thanks. Thanks. Uh, Gad Tobacco Plantation, as truth does not depart from human nature, if what is regarded as truth departs from human nature, it may not be regarded as truth. Vudum. Big up. Yeah, bless. Powerful. So, this evening at 6.30pm, there's a documentary filming for only £4.99. It's crazy. Cheap price. Like, I don't know, man. You don't really get that anymore. That's more like, that's like a chicken and chips price. 
Although we avoid that <laughs> and we buy the cinema ticket because you don't get cinema tickets for that cheap. And that's, um, yeah, Black Panther, Adinkra, mm. Collective screening yeah we've been blessed actually um yeah so we've screened a few films from dogworth but this one came across yeah black panther's vanguard of the revolution um directed by stanley nelson uh, and if ones and ones may not know the name they'll know um you know probably the freedom riders um seminal film um just documenting um around the time where you know they had jim crow mm. and i was just saying we just want to ride on the buses and just riding from one end of uh, America, two to the other, deep, deep south. Um, yeah, enough beatings up and what have you. So that's the director of Freedom Riders, as well as the murder of Emmett Till. And um, and also, I think he did a film um, about the Jim Jones when he killed up all them people in Guyana. Um, that's, I think it was a, the people of the temple, something like that, mm. in Guyana. So he did that film as well. And um, so he's now done Black Panther's Vanguard of Revolution. So we've got that. Tonight, um, 6.30, 6.30, 6.30, uh, and uh, Peck and Plex, and that, as I say, the Q&A, which is a real blessing. So Stanley Nelson and uh, a former Black Panther by the name of Mohammed Mubarak, welcome, welcome. Um, he's going to be there as well. So I, mean, I know they're doing Big. a whole kind of tour around the UK right now, so they're just, it's going to be a half an hour Q&A, and I think one of them has got to go to the, to the BBC to, to do his thing later on, and then mm. the other one I think is going to go across town to Hackney to do a Q&A there. So it's a, a tight window of q and I urge the ones and ones to come through because one of the things as well as with cinema and kind of touching upon it with regards to black economics is if we kind of don't support some of these films that come true, mm. you know what I mean? It's like, well, we've kind of got no excuses. I mean, mm. like, so whilst it's four ninety nine, Peck and Plex is four ninety nine every single day of the week. Mm. And so, but I've just jumped in to their little Black History Month programming and i'm sort of curating like three or four films within this window black panthers being one of them um adama being another about a young boy leaving his little village in africa following his brother to first world war um basically first world war france because mm. they're kind of inscripted into the army there and it's a beautiful animation and um so we've got you know we've got a few films rocking off so but yeah for tonight it's going to be quite deep because whilst i'm going to sort of sit back and do a little bit of hosting Sister Zena Edwards is going to pretty much, you know, wow, like another lock legend. Down the panel, seriously, and mm. so because when you do watch a film, you'll sort of see there's a lot of there's a big feminine element in it, and almost like a discussion, you mm. know, a dislocation, a kind of an argument to be had, and um, and so whilst you know we thought, okay, let's have the Q and A and man's lead it, it needs that real kind of strong female energy, which For as balance. you know, mm. Zena Edwards brings that, you know what I mean, so. So yeah, so that's really the ones and ones. Try and get up there tonight, six thirty, and that'll be a blessing. If Catch you it while that. you can, yeah. basically. Yeah, please do. Uh, the Pet Complex, and this is a Dinkra Collect- Arts Collective. Yeah, I mean we've got a few events, so I mean just check out our website, really. So it's the Dinkra Arts Collective dot com, and you'll see we've got a whole load of sort of you know almost like healing through film and conversation. So. As I said, we've got like touch upon what Dabo was, um, Tabo was mentioning about learning the art of craft. Um, this Thursday, we've got youth empowering in youth, um, and it's really a kind of a media workshop. We have to own our own images. We have to take them, own them, lock them down, mm. create it in all its forms, and that's what we try and do: celebrate African imagery in all its beautiful forms. Mm. And um, and that's really what we're going to try and sort of push forward on Thursday, twenty second. Um, again, it's at Bell's Gardens Community Centre, if you know Peckham, um, Bell's Gardens Community Centre. And it's really this one is targeted really at 12 to 18-year-olds who want to learn a little bit about journalism. Uh, my background's in media and communications. So, again, I won't necessarily be doing the whole thing. It'll be run by young people, so POV Media, young organisation. And uh, hopefully Guap Magazine will be in the room. And if you know anything about Guap right now, they've just gone clear. Yeah. Just oh, wow. found out today... Okay that their magazine's on the shelf. This is a young brother. I met him just the other day in Peckham um, in an internet cafe. I was just talking about film because I was on a location job. Mm. And he heard me and he said, oh, brother, I do a little ting with my this magazine. And he, yeah. and I held my phone over this page. Yep. <laughs> and the phone started to move like I'd see a film yeah. on my phone. Yeah. I'm like, brother, ex- le- explain this to me what I'm seeing here. <laughs> He goes, the film's in the paper. I'm like, bro, I'm old. Break it down slower than that. <laughs> he goes, no, nah, you've got an app on the phone. The phone reads a ting. And then you go subscribe to it for £20 or whatever. And you get a whole bag of little information. Da-da-da. 
I just looked at the man in awe. I said, I don't know what we got to do. We've got to give you a platform. That since that conversation less than six months ago, I see the brother on his Facebook page, um, Ibrahim Kamara, shout you out. Um, you know, literally he's shaking hands with this man. You know what I mean? All House of Commons, a young entrepreneur of 2015, BEFTA nomination. Now he just linked on his Facebook saying, our magazines are on the shelves right now today. Wow. And, he, and man ed educated man, like, what's guap? He goes, why? You know, anybody in the room know what Guaf is? No. You know, I see yeah. David Jesus on it. Like, David Jesus, like, yeah, man, how you mean? Money. Money. Oh, you know what I mean? Guap. Yeah, he's yeah, like G U A P, Guap. Yeah, but it's actually spelled something. Yeah, yeah, it's an acronym. I yeah, I can't remember, but like something about, yeah. you know, African people or something. But he's on it. Like, it's an acronym. And he's used it to empower ones and ones. And very, very clever. So hopefully he's also going to be, if he's not there on the 22nd, he will be there on the 31st, giving a presentation at the sort of the culmination of the well-being events. We've got a few. We've got a sit-down with Melik Shabazz on the 30th, and that's going to be a hot dinner, mm. sit-down with the man looking at his films, having a conversation, how do we heal through film and connection. Mm. And then the 31st is going to be a, a day of just well-being. So, you I mean, you just play a little bit of Niles there in the Hellstones. His son, Haru, is going to just do it a five-minute version a song and he's going to bless us with that and you know what i mean it's yeah, for, guess, for our galaxy Young listeners Haru. out there you might have heard Seriously. Haru rip up the mic over Seriously. here Go on. you know what i mean so he, yeah you heard and it he got you that viral um following didn't he, he got yeah. like, like like 50 odd thousand 12 years. year old you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. conscious on it you know what i mean can talk about garvey all day long mm. so i mean as i said the 31st he's going to be at the well-being event and that's an african market they rise up auntie jean again and um, and really about that, it's about, you know, we're going to offer out free massage, Reiki session, talk about holistic health, look at the prostate for the man's them. There's one, two, three, four, five man that chances are by the stats, one of us may well have it by the time we're 60. Prostate mm -hmm. cancer I'm talking about. So it's a mad situation. So we're going to mm -hmm. have a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. And also we're going to bless up the place with lots of different stalls, celebrating our creativity, you, reached out to your sister and who does the shoes mm. so you know african designer of african scented shoes mm. wow what's not to love about that yeah and yeah, so yeah, yeah so it's going to be a full-on event and as i say it's going to be all it's there's a freeness vibe it's not to promote african has to be free the idea is what we try and do with the dinker is take the excuses away Right. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Oh, I've got yeah, the money. Yeah. So it's like, oh, yeah, but no, bro, I'm, you know what I mean? It's a little yeah. bit rainy. All right. Then. I know. It goes in. <laughs> so, I was actually considering, like, could we do a service where you go and pick people up at their house sit there. and bring them to the Because people are missing out. This is what I'm saying. Is like when Tabo <laughs> says about people from Goldsmiths and Campbell Arts are kind of coming to, you know, pen people like, you know, Nikki's, you know Nicholas is running the spot. Mm. And like, you know what I mean? Opens the door and puts the exhibition on. And yeah, you're right. It's right that, you know, Goldsmiths and, and Campbell Arts, but our young ones have to see what's mm. going on mm. because that is the narrative. Right. When you go to there, because like I said, I wrote the article and to me, he is an activist because enough people can roll up with camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to activate yourself in order to sort of create some, some change, mm. you know what I mean? You react, you react to it. Mm. So that to me is what that Tabo does, whether or not he wants to take that crown and it might kind of put him in a pigeonhole where he doesn't get hired so much by the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, but it, to me, it's, it's kind of fundamental that we rise him up to know that he has activated himself to follow these things. Because I've been on, we've been on deaths in custody and there's hardly anybody taking pictures on these things. Mm. Exhibition B, man's there, BBC, they're across town. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? The Voice yeah. newspaper. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where, where were they at? The, 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 you know what I mean? So... So, yeah, to me, no, I rise this brother up all day long, all day long in rain, mm. snow, sleet. He's outside embassies mm. and all of that. So, so yeah, so come true. If you can Google it, adinkraartscollective.com, and there'll be a whole program of events. And um, we just want to bless up the space, really. Yeah, so, yeah I just wanted to so. say, Guap is uh, great understanding and power. There you Great go. Great understanding, understanding and, and power. There you go. There you go. Available in your stores now. And you'll meet the brothers behind it, you know what I'm going to say, in the next week or two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, 6.30 tonight, we can... So, doors again. open at 6.30. Doors open at 6.30. A little intro Prompt. by myself. But, I mean, at the end of the day, was, you know I mean? There'll probably be a little trailer or what have you. But, you know, you're right to say prompt. But the funny thing is, when the films start, you know what I mean, and you're trying to bump into people in the dark, it's up to you, you know what I mean? The film will be on it. It's a deep film. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I'm not going to say prompt. You know what I mean? 
I wish I'll have to I'll say for you. Yeah, go on. Prompt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 6.30 like, prompt. It's like Black Friday. Yeah. Should we should be doing Oh my <laughs> gosh. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I had the, I had the, I mean, I shouldn't even say this, but I am going to say this because it touched upon the kind of little echoes of racism and the, the, arguably the subtleties of it now mm. is that the cinema owner was like saying, oh yeah, yeah, it'll be good. Like, you know, people turn up quite early because you don't want to be on African time. Mm-mm. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like African invented time. How you mean like? No, what? But what happens is, is they just seen it now. It's kind of common Casual. parlance. She obviously got that from somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether yeah, it be Lenny because... Henry or whatever. You know what I mean? This notion. <laughs> Lenny Henry. Nah, you know what I mean? <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? She was fired. <laughs> but the fact is, she sees it as common language now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. They get some of these things from somewhere and they kind of bounce it back. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it could be low riding jeans or something. Mm. But, you know, we buy into that. I had to kind of question on it. And, you know, she's Jewish. She didn't like to kind of tell her about herself. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> is that. You know what I mean? We have to get a yeah. sense of ownership with these spaces. So mm. let's just do it, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, th- that's right. Six thirty, Black Panthers tonight documentary, Vanguard. the Vanguard. Like, and anyone who knows anything about the Black Panthers, there was serious movement in the seventies and and the sixties slash seventies, and um, yeah, the new Black it's, Panther party is still about. And the new Black Panther party is still about, and yeah, it's gonna be that like you can catch it while you can, basically. And com- Coming up on the hour, we have Ras Ezekiel. He's in the building. He'll be with you from 6 up until 8, eight o'clock, o'clock with some wonderful, wonderful music as usual. Yeah. And what is we've got events to just reel out as well? Yes, I'm going to reel this one out. Croydon Supplementary Education Project, the CSEP, in conjunction with the Bojang Tamba School of Excellence Youth Development Initiatives, presents... Stand Up and Be Counted, Part 5. It's a fundraising dinner and dance for home and abroad projects. This Saturday, the 31st of October. And it's at the lustrous uh, Croydon Park Hotel, number 7, Altire Road, Croydon, Surrey, CR9. And if you're interested, you can call 0208... 686-7865. Doors are open from 4 p.m. And there's going to be the legendary Omar is going to be performing there. We've got Carol Thompson. This is just to name a few. You've got uh, Dr. Les Henry, doc- our very own Dr. Abu Ratata. Galaxy. Yes, Big Up Galaxy. Robin Walker, the legend. Every time I see Robin Walker, I just feel like such a geek. Not for that reason. But more, I just get excited because I'm just like, wow, it's Robin Walker in this. You know, I love history. So all these people, excuse me, are going to be in the building. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I need a bit of water right now. Live on air. Have we got a caller? No, we haven't. But we the event that is coming up, which Kunga Jed was talking about, the African market, is situated at 19 Buller Close, S-E, that's S for sugar, E for echo, 15, 6, U for U, as in U. And then J, off commercial way. It's not hard to find. Okay, so that was the last caller was asking about the details there. And we just want to finish this off. It's a Black History event. This is back to the Stand Up and Be Counted event. It's a Black History event. Um, So just run through what's going to be happening at 4.30 in conversation with Dr. Les Henry, Robin Walker, Daniel Pink and Abby Bejo. The dinner starts from 7 p.m. And live from Gambia, Jali Keba Suso. Uh, Gambia, Griot and Cora. There'll be poetry from Blackball, uh, Perfect Union, Dinner Music, Best and Salsa, Best Salsa and Jazz. Then Showtime from 9:15 p.m. Um, there will also be raffles and stalls, and this is supported by Galaxy Radio. It's a big event, so people, it's going to be on the 31st of October, Saturday the 31st. Stand up and be counted. That's right, and. 
as uh, Kunga mentioned earlier, we, all five of us, was um, um, at Auntie Jean's, Auntie Jean's I love that African name. market. It's so perfect. On uh, <laughs> Sunday Gone. Yes. And it was amazing. Definitely. The place was packed. Yep. All that black economy stuff going on just circulating that black circulating that beautifully one knowledge reasoning and understanding all of that all encompassed in one space you had robin walker who did a talk who's who we mentioned him earlier yep. yeah yeah you had tony warner there had tony and warner. the astounding andrew muhammad andrew muhammad yeah my first time seeing him in fact that's my first time seeing him. Yeah. And I was blown away. The motivational speaking. And he's so funny. He's hilarious. He is funny. <laughs> yeah, but that motivation. The, the line and the screw stayed in my head. Yeah. You know, the line, like, why has Britain stolen the lion? And really and truly, the emblem oh, for England should be, should be the screw. <laughs> and he's done it like that. He's done it. Yeah, yeah. Should be squirrels like that. The, the image of the screw that's came to it. Like <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> But it's just that, that kind of empowerment that he gives at the end of his uh, the talks as well. That element is needed. Sometimes we, we do hear a lot of the doom and gloom and all the stuff that's happening, but he's also trying to rise us up and say we can do a lot more. And that was really important. I took away from that, that feeling that motivational speaking is important for our people, I do feel. As long as we take it on board, though, because, you know, you can hear something and then go, <laughs> just yeah, go out the true. room and it's like you never heard anything at all. It's true, like, that's why we should smile each, at each other after events. It's easy to do it during the yeah. event, but on the street, we just, it's back to normal. Yeah, even within two minutes, like, you've just been in a hall with uh, your family and you walk straight out and then you just don't want to speak to anyone that you've just been, you know in the same hall with listening to the same thing yeah but yeah this this this, <laughs> <laughs> this sunday Man. coming up there's another edition of the of auntie jean's african culture market mm -hmm. and it's at the same place as it was last sunday so if you didn't get a chance to make it down or if you even if you did you should make it down again just to get that experience of going there because it's phenomenal and then you've got like big acts like yeah, respect fire bingy. Respect fire bingy. It's gonna fire up the place as usual, and then you got um ten die Mari. Ten die, we don't add here. We don't ten say die, hello. We say die. ten die Mari, and we might have to play that. Yeah, we might have to if we got time. And also, um, brother leader Bandaka from Al Kebel and Revivalist Movement, and a couple of others. My memory like escapes me but yes this sunday uh same place at 48 mort lake close mm -hmm. se15 2qe and it's around the corner from here <laughs> yeah it's around the corner from here literally and on tuesday coming up we have poetry meets art another special edition yes big with. up miss emma akko who's bringing the information to the people about congo <laughs> and about conflict minerals through her wonderful carpe diem events yeah so like again she had one earlier now this is going to be another regular event that she's doing she's taken over slowly if you watch like if you observe what's happening with emma yeah. akko, she's a movement in herself and she's got Every fourth Tuesday of the month now, this is going to be the first one. It's going to be an epic one. Like, you're going to have Poetry Meets Art in Elephant and Castle at the Artworks, which is around the corner from the station itself. The Artworks, if you've not been there, to check it out. There, it's this uh, little hub above... Um different restaurants and they've got there's a african uh arts and crafts place as well and it's made up you know those containers a bit like box park sort of event check it out it's a nice little area to go and sort of you know explore and hang out that's right and performing you have the brilliant performer that is one Ness sankara on the bill wow. and then you've got um of course we say mention his name raspit fire bingy who's everywhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh Messiah Storm champion Gallant. Gallant Shaka. will be doing his thing. No. And then also you have moi. Oh. Yeah, you don't yeah. know who I am, you know what I mean? You know, also <laughs> no, know that the 
the, 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 the and what it can encompass and how we believe uh, changing the mindset of the people in that way can uh, affect a substantial change in a short space of time upon achieving it. And of course, it is in conjunction with the only the brainwashing station, Galaxy, Galaxy Radio. Afi. So Galaxy, Afi Dr. Station. Abu, shout out to Dr. Abu, our uh, elder and uncle and leader um, who's going to be um, doing a presentation there as well as he did at the previous one it's exciting it's like yeah, so that's I'll next Tuesday yeah yeah came around quick so she is just rushed off her feet like literally we just came from a um, the t- last Tuesday's one it was amazing it was mind blowing like that's my first time seeing one Sankara have you seen her perform yeah. <sighs> just too much <laughs> and then afterwards you know when you go up to people and you're like wow and they're so humble and <laughs> just like oh man yeah. like exactly I've been bestowed with that blessing from oneness she's just you've got some next energy and the subject matter I really really was feeling as well mm. yeah with the, with the one with the um, black brother one do you yeah. remember that one? but yeah the the, the but hey, everyone ripped it up as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to just um, no favoritism, but yeah, I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Tuesday coming up. There's poetry meets art, and then Sunday, Auntie Jean's African Market. It's big. Yeah, and, and make sure you get down to the exhibition. Um, you were saying, Tabo, that it is actually really, really. Um, pleasant to go to see it at the, in the evening time as well as the lights fade yes it looks it looks um, it looks nice in the evening mm, so it's like if you can head down there it, st- it closes by what time are we going to be there till 9 maybe nine. 10 o'clock this evening okay and oh, tomorrow no, 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 and the day to. after yes <laughs> <laughs> and so. Thursday's the last day <laughs> Yeah, actually, Friday is the last Friday. Friday, okay. Yeah. Till put, Friday. And what time is it open? Opens from about 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, okay, so make sure you head down there and enjoy that exhibition. Yeah. And so, like, the man who's actually opened up this space, Nicholas, Pen People, can we get more information about Pen People and, and the intentions <coughs> and what's happening and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pen People is an abbreviation for People Empowering People. Um, I set the organisation up about five years ago um, because we were trying to run a few projects. And, you know, my thing was, you know, when you want something and you're at home, you ask your neighbour, you don't go to the council, you don't ask anybody else, you ask the nearest person closest to you. And I always found that there was always somebody who could help me to do stuff. And what I was doing was actually just getting them to do, you know, the general work before every time I did something. I thought, do you know what? You know, living in a deprived area, you know, why can't I help people to actually do things? Um, I started off by doing uh, how to succeed in the music uh, industry. It's funny because one of the guys actually came to that about five years ago, literally popped into the shop today. So that was kind of nice because they learned quite a lot, you know, being a former DJ. But then... Um, I set up a bike project because I, I cycled quite a lot. Like the other guy said, I used to be a salesman. I used mm. to work for a pharmaceutical company. And, you know, I used to drive all over England. Uh, used to be an illegal... No, I used to be a legal drug dealer. Let me just say, <laughs> a legal <laughs> drug dealer. Uh, I used to be a key account manager for a pharmaceutical company. Uh, that used to be my joke to get young children in. Um, and, you know, I used to come home and then cycle... And then I was asked by somebody to set up a bike project and I said, no way, I'm not interested. Mm. But I then realised that lots of people are coming to my house, asking for a pump <laughs> and then they pump their bike <laughs> and then it's got a puncher. A then they want, you know, they <laughs> literally want to, you know, they wanted a puncher kit. Then you give them a puncher kit and they can't fix the puncher. So I went mm. back to the council. I said, look, I'll do it. And 
um, you know, started teaching them how to fix their punches. We were lucky enough. We got bikes off uh, Peckham Police Station. They gave us a whole heap of bikes. And it literally just kind of took off from there. And then after, I think, about a year or about a year, I then went off to, no, about, probably about, you know, I'd done a few other projects and kept the bike project running. Um, last year, we took over the lease for the BMX track in Burgess Park. Mm. So we've got the lease to that until 2018. Big. Um, and then uh, the year before we did a project in Lambeth Mm. and uh, that took off but I think what was really important about the Lambeth project when things really took off was that we actually got local people from within the community to actually run the project themselves they weren't qualified but I didn't care Mm. they were going to run it last year we got all of them all of them graduated with a sitting guilds level two in bike mechanics mm. oh, so yes, most yeah. of my mechanics are fully qualified we've done that ourselves okay with some you know with with help with some with some of the funding um i mean i know we're in Southwark, but most of my qualified bike mechanics are in lambeth in okay um, <laughs> so you know and we kind of took on last year we came into the pop-up <laughs> shop <laughs> no, I've got to say it. Uh, so last year i mean last year we took over that we you know we decided to do a stint in the pop-up shop and that went really really well mm. you know we had tape modern who came down and done some stuff for us i'm just about to become an associate of tape modern as well See. um what else you know we, had we was in the building sorry we were in the building <laughs> <laughs> i remember we were in the building yeah. at some stage <laughs> yeah so you know the whole point about people mm. empowering people is about helping people to help themselves mm. yeah you know i've got a guy that who's gonna set up another bike project you know you probably hate me for saying this but he's dyslexic mm. and i made him sit and fill out a 13 page application oh. because mm. i knew he could do it mm. okay he didn't do it correctly but he had that power to say do you know what I actually contributed to my own project Big. rather than somebody else doing Big. it. And that's what it's about. Yeah. You see, um, you know, we've done, you know, we've been working with Tabo, f- you know, for li- for a little while now. And I also I knew him through other mutual friends. And, mm. you know, I've always kind of seen some of the stuff that he's done. And, you know, when we, you know, when we took over for Black History Month this month, I said, Tabo, you need to come and do something. Mm. I ain't got no money. So, and I will say this to everybody. To do this project, most of my projects are funded. We didn't get any funding. Right. But the whole emphasis was whether we got funding or we didn't get funding, we were going to do it. Mm. Mm. And you know what? I'm glad that we've done it Mm. because I think it gives everybody an excuse to say, just because you didn't get any funding, you didn't get any grant, you can't do it. Mm. Right. Now, the fact is sometimes if you don't get funding, it actually sets you back. So if you can think about how you're going to deliver a project with or without funding, you know, I will tell everybody, just do it. Right. And also, if you do it and people realize that you can do it without funding, mm. then the question is, it's, it's, it's going to stop them from not giving it to you next time. Mm. And, you know, that whole funding thing is kind of changing anyway. Mm. Um, you know, but, you know, we've been in existence for, you know, about f- five years. Um, and it's just about, you know, giving local people the opportunity to do stuff. Mm. So, for example, when you come into the pop-up shop, you know, when we're there, it's constantly changing. You know, right. some guy came in one minute with screen printing T-shirts for Jashaka, and the next thing, the whole place is cleared because of somebody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as observed. <laughs> as observed. <laughs> uh, and it's spotless. But, you know, I think, you know, the good thing about that is that it's it's given it another dimension in terms of what we're doing and what as we as a community can actually do and i think that's the emphasis that if we all work together and i think we've all worked together very well mm. you know it's actually brought on something that is needed you know i hear comments about people saying this is well overdue in peckham right, you know? right so the question is if i didn't you know if we didn't get the money and we didn't do it we wouldn't have done it so i'm kind of glad that we've done it mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's, it's amazing work. And yeah. and there's big future plans as well. Well, we've got a very massive future plan. I can't really talk about it too, too much at the moment. Yeah, I'll be Give back in the studio. Bit Remember bit I said the door's open, you know. All I'm going to say is, <laughs> all I'm going to say is um, fingers crossed, we've located a space in Southwark, which is absolutely massive. It's going to have a bike, an accredited bike training place. It's going to have a metal workshop, wood workshop. It's going to have office space. It's going to have a cultural space to do events, shows, weddings. No, not weddings. 
um, and other bits and pieces. Um, and the whole point of it is really about getting local people involved and doing stuff. Okay. Yeah, amazing. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, we should hear by, by Christmas whether it's a yay or a nay. Right, okay. right. Well, we're going to power that up for sure. Yeah. Spiritual power and that. So, yeah. And then hopefully, gonna we'll, be get, a we'll get Tabo to come and do another exhibition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be amazing. You know, and mm-hmm. also get Congo involved because, you know, we want to show films and stuff down there as well. Isn't it, Congo? I mean, that's the one. I love the vibe that you're working out, and it's a collective thing. So, you know, Yujuma, brother. Yujuma, yes, yeah, yes. You know? And so Ubuntu, yeah. yeah. And also, just to say, because I know Stella mentioned about Biafra. I'm actually from the Biafra region in Nigeria. See, okay. Um, so, so Stella. I'm, I'm kind of watching what's going on down there at the moment. Um, I'm just seeing how... I mean, I actually grew up down there as well. Okay. So I think maybe that's given me a different perspective in terms of how we do things. And I think, you know, there's a phrase that's been used over here that, you know, I don't really agree on too much because I think we actually need to practice it when they say it takes a, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm. We actually have to do it rather than saying it. True talk. And that's a, that's a, that's a perfect way to... Uh, what's the word? finish well <laughs> penultimate <laughs> penultimate because yeah no like we have to rise up um uh nicholas tabo and kunga and david J for for the the amazing works that they've continually done over the last well, i don't know like 30 years <laughs> and, and uh, as that i, I want to give a round of applause you know what i mean like it's appreciated. That's some great, 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 great. It's people. very much appreciated, yeah. and and yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you Thank know, you I, I just want to say a big thank you to both of you for giving us this Seriously. opportunity as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the door now, is you know? wide. Open. <laughs> yeah, the door is always open. You know, involved with us. But yeah. yeah. Up next, we have got Rasa Zikul. You've been listening to Stella B. And that night <laughs> on Galaxy Afri, the only D brainwashing station. We've had Tabo, we've had Nicholas, and we've had Kunga Jed and David J in the in, in the building. So give thanks.